The following is a presentation given to the Rotary Club by a member of the Merrimack 275th Anniversary Planning Committee regarding their covered bridge project proposal. It is a pleasure to be here this morning on behalf of a town committee, the 275th Town Planning Committee for our celebrator, uh, celebratory year. As my boss, uh, Matt Kasparius, um, we have uh, a number of very fine people on our committee. It was the practice at the 250th uh, anniversary to have a remembrance committee that raised money for a gift for the town. And so continuing along those lines, when we formed our committee this year, uh, we said, well, what kind of a gift do we want to leave the town that will mark 275 years of progress? A lot of ideas were floated. Uh, none were uh, unacceptable. Uh, all were given great consideration and thought. And ultimately, we decided that the town is at a turning point, uh, as it has found itself so many times before. We have new people, new opportunity. The town is growing. Um, we wanted to do something big that would impact the town. And so we landed on this particular project. We knew that at Twin Bridge Park, there was a bridge badly in need of repair that could open up the 25 additional acres of the park to a multi-recreational use. We've discovered particularly in the last couple of years, that people need resources close to home. They can't afford to have the condo at the beach or the cabin at the mountains or uh, any of those kinds of luxuries that we once did. And so if a town is going to thrive, it has to provide those kinds of opportunities. Merrimack has been very good about that over the years, particularly with our youth programs. But we thought, we need to repair a bridge anyway. If we just put in a small bridge, well, truthfully, it was going to cost us as much, almost, as an actual full-size bridge. Permitting regulations, flow regulations, uh, all kinds of transportation regulations, Army Corps of Engineers, etc., etc. So we said, well, you know, for just a little bit more money, if we were going to build a bridge, we could put in a full-scale, authentic, covered bridge. And that would do a number of things for us if we were to accomplish it. It would satisfy the grand lament that we have had over the years that two of our bridges we once enjoyed were burnt down in the late 60s. And we've always felt bad that we lost those covered bridges. But in today's transportation scheme, it's not possible for us to build a covered bridge uh, over a conventional uh, transportation route. But at Twin Bridges, we have a unique opportunity because it's actually the very first road in the town of Merrimack. Uh, it was constructed in 1733, and the uh, bridge abutments that are down there right now are the original stone abutments from that period. And so by building a big bridge like this, we can go over the top of the abutments and the historic concrete bridge, completely hide them from public view, and have a very large pavilion, 12 feet wide on the inside, 60 feet long. We can have a destination venue with this bridge. We can have weddings, we can have corporate picnics, we can have reunions, we can have all kinds of things happen on this bridge. And oh, by the way, while we're renting out the bridge and gaining some revenue to help maintain our park systems and so forth, uh, people can get from one place to another by walking on the sidewalk outside the bridge. And of course, when nobody is down there having an event, the bridge is simply ours to use. 
I know in my own mind, I, I can't wait to get my wife down there in the middle of the bridge and give her a big kiss in the middle of a covered bridge. I mean, those are the kinds of historic things we always think about. That's why we call them kissing bridges very often. It would be a destination feature of our community. There are none around here anymore. We have to go up north or over into Vermont in order to enjoy this kind of a recreational opportunity. And while I understand the difficulties of fundraising, and nobody knows them better than the master fundraisers of Merrimack, the Rotary Club, there are, I'm sorry to say, some podunk towns in New Hampshire and Vermont that manage to afford this kind of thing. And we are a community of 30,000 people, centrally located, quite frankly, uh, the middle of the very best of the Golden Triangle uh, of New Hampshire. We should be able to accomplish something that. We believe we can accomplish something like this. And the good effects are almost too numerous to particularize. It would solve so many things that would bring us into the future and provide for economic benefits. If somebody was having a wedding, well, somebody has to stay in one of our hotels because they're coming from out of state. They have to eat meals here. Musicians have to play for the wedding. Caterers have to cater the wedding. All of these economic opportunities are real and productive uh, if we create something like this as a foundation for our community to go into the future. And we call it the Gristmill Bridge because about 300 feet downstream is an historic gristmill called the Coal Gristmill. Most people are, quite frankly, unaware that Twin Bridges even exists. They think it's the MYA ballpark. And yet we have 25 acres of pristine glacial meltwater retreat beauty at Twin Bridges. The water falls about 80 feet in 800 with a, a geologic cascade that most people would go almost uh, anywhere to view. And having said that, if you'll just excuse me a moment, I'd like to pass something around. This is the earliest photograph we have of Twin Bridges. And again, this was the original road through Merrimack. So here we have a picture, and there is uh, one of the original wooden bridges uh, that existed there, and there's a wagon on top of it. And this wagon was a wagon driven around by A.E. Alden, one of the very early photographers. Now, he doesn't suffer the same history that Matt Brady does, simply because he didn't take a lot of Civil War photos. But he was one of the most prolific photographers of portraits and landscapes in early photography. And here he is on our little bridge with his little van that says views taken, office inside van. And he's sitting on a rock down in the middle. So I think it's particularly interesting that uh, he saw that as a beautiful landscape that he could promote in his photography. Henry David Thoreau came through here uh, as he writes in his journal and he stayed at the old uh, hotel of Sam McConaughey's, which is where the library is presently. And the old hotel was moved across the street. We all know it as Connell's. But that was the original hotel. And after dinner, Henry walked down the back through the old road, down over the bridge, and noted in his journal what an absolutely glorious cascade and landscape that was pristine. And he, of course, had a way of really appreciating things of great beauty. And in the early 20th century, some of the old timers in town um, got together and said, you know, we should preserve this. And so they arranged an agreement between several different landholders, the Fessenden and Lowell Company, uh, the Gordons, the Hazeltines, uh, the same people that gave us our library. Uh, 
and said, all right, we're going to consolidate this 25 to 27 acres and give it to the town so that it will have it in perpetuity. And now I suggest that perpetuity has come. And we need to do something to use this resource in a way that will excite and benefit uh, not only our recreational opportunities, but our economic opportunities as well. And so I have humbly come here this morning to uh, engage uh, all of you in the idea uh, to embrace and to help and to work with us to create something better for the town of Merrimack. That's it in a nutshell. I'd be glad to answer some questions. Could you give us a timeline of like <coughs> where you're at today, when, when, when you would expect that this bridge might be built, um, where, where does fundraising stand, you know, that sort of thing, and, and some of the ways that you are going to fundraise? So you'd like to know some of the particulars as opposed to the optimism. <laughs> Well, presently, we have raised a little under $10,000. And uh, yes, there are things we know about fundraising, um, which are not new to any of you. We, we fully expect that about 85% of our uh, fundraising will be from ordinary citizens in Merrimack. It's very easy to stand here and say, oh, sure, we've got a lot of big businesses. They're going to give us money. Uh, that's not actually how it works, and I believe you all understand that. There will be some donations from larger companies, but we need to rely upon the people of Merrimack. And so rather than uh, uh, the half million dollars that we need coming from some grant somewhere, removed from our lives and activities, as nice as that sounds, it's not rewarding for the people that actually would improve and utilize these uh, these opportunities. So we have 30,000 people. Uh, that's about two cups of Starbucks coffee for every person in town. I know how hard it is to raise that, but that's how simple it actually is. We need everybody to give. We need kids to be stakeholders in this, even if it's only a dollar, simply because they will grow up and say, I remember when this bridge was being built, and I remember donating to it as a kid. I still have my Hopalong Cassidy picture. <laughs> yes, sir. Who built this model? I built this model. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this, this is a scale model of the actual bridge that we intend to build there. Very nice. Can I ask two questions? Yes. What year was the photo taken? We know? Oh, the, the photo, uh, about 1860, somewhere between 1860 and 1863. Thank you. Yeah, it's hard to believe that was the main road in town in 1863. So just to, to follow up on my question. I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't give you enough, I know. It's about a half a million dollars. No, but I was wondering, like, is, are, you, are you hopeful that this can be completed? the next three years or five years? Well, if you want to give us three years, we're happy with that. But we expect to do it in two years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it can't go on forever, right? Um, and, and we think that's doable. We just have to spread the word, get people excited, get people to know that there's a park there that uh, uh, all of these kinds of things can actually happen at. Um, yeah, and we have uh, engaged uh, on a conceptual basis uh, the master bridge right of America, Arnold Grayton. He is the covered bridge builder legend uh, across the nation. And he, he lives in Ashland, New Hampshire, and has spent a lifetime repairing and uh, building new covered bridges. We want it to be authentic so that it will, in fact, be the kind of uh, draw that people will want to see. People come from all over the world to see covered bridges. And they fly into Manchester and they immediately drive north. And we want them to just stop by in Merrimack and uh, give them breakfast. 
and all of those things that are associated with people coming to our town and improving our way of life. Yes. I'm curious, do we, to build a bridge like that, do we need old growth? Do we need some really big trees to, to make that type of bridge? Uh, because of the uh, building standards that are in play now, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it was 30 years ago, I would want to build this bridge myself with, you know, maybe 10 other guys. And we'd go out and we'd haul down some uh, big white pine trees and we'd run them through a little bandsaw mill and we'd work at it and it would all be good. We could do those kinds of things 30 years ago. We can't now. Uh, Great & Associates uses a special wood that they buy in Connecticut, uh, which is actually graded and treated for tower construction. So the bridge will be fireproof uh, from the very beginning. But, of course, that kind of uh, graded material uh, costs a lot of money. Uh, maybe it has gone up, and maybe by the time we get around to this, it will have gone down again, uh, as all things do go up and down. But, yes, the costs associated with something like this now are so tightly controlled by um, permitting restrictions and overview and so forth. I mean, for instance, when we're building a bridge like this, we also have to think about the approaches uh, which have to be changed. So there is some site development uh, you know, associated with that. We also want to run power down to the bridge so that we can, in, in fact, have events that are powered on the bridge. And uh, we want to have alarm systems and monitoring systems that are all part of regular technology today. I mean, just think of it as putting a little ring bell right here on the on the end of the bridge. It's just that simple now, which is uh, uh, an added feature of seeing this through to the end. Um, again, I, I've, I've thought about this so much, and I know my time is limited, uh, so I have, I have tried to give you a very brief overview. I assure you, I could probably take up most of your day talking about the history of Twin Bridge Park, the history of Merrimack, uh, and I think I'm the right salesman for this particular project in many respects. I've simply offered everybody else on the committee the opportunity to do the same, but I have been more associated with the history of town and uh, I know how town operates. I've held public office, uh, all of those things. So yeah, it's a more complicated world today. But this is where we live. This is our home. This is what gives us our sense of place. And I think that this bridge will be a crown jewel to our park when we complete it. And I'm expecting to complete it in two years. Yes, sir. As you probably know, this, where is Twin Bridges? Kids Cove. Kids Cove? Oh, Kids Cove Park. So that's was the it proper when you name go back Bridges. there and there's this, the river stream there? Yeah, behind the Kids yeah. Cove structures. But the park has actually always been called Twin Bridge, even though nobody calls it that. And is it the bridge that sort of leads you to like where the Fit Lamp? Uh, yeah. yeah, down over there. Stuff, you know, that. Sure, These guys more. probably know that better than me, but it's actually two bridges. Now, in, in, in 1733, it was actually called Three Bridges because there was an initial bridge to an island and then a second bridge to a little pier in the middle of Babuzik Brook, and then a third bridge from that pier over to the North Shore. But now it's just twin bridges. There are only two there now. You mentioned running power <coughs> for various things, including alarms. What would the purpose of the alarms be? Well, there again, that's something that we've recently found out is a little more complicated than you might think. Uh, uh, we have to have um, an alarm for smoke. We have to have an alarm for fire. We have to have an alarm for police. Uh, so there are various uh, sensory techniques that would be advantageous for us to employ on the bridge. Uh, all of our town buildings presently have that, with the exception of our uh, schoolhouse 
uh, number 12 over in South Merrimack, although we are upgrading that now to meet all of those requirements. It's just standard operating procedure in communities now with all of our rules and regulations. But it, it does amount to a, a continuing cost. And those, of course, uh, have to be absorbed into an operating uh, budget for something. So we're hoping that we can generate this as a complete gift to the town of Merrimack um, so that we don't uh, have to require people to uh, vote on a ballot issue or something like that. It's, it's the planning committee's intent and desire that our town come together and understand the real benefits of accomplishing something like this and uh, moving into the future. This is a bridge to the future. Yes, sir. You may have done this already, but what is, what's the first steps in getting the word out about this bridge? Well, I've already taken some of the first steps, but I know they're baby steps, and we have a lot more to go, because uh, it, it has to be a situation where the idea spreads throughout the community and there is a universal acceptance that it's, that it's happening, that it's going to happen, and that at some point somebody will say, hey, Joe, you know, you, you gave us 50 bucks for this. Uh, geez, I can do that. That's a great idea. I'm glad you mentioned it to me. Uh, all of those kinds of things. We know that's how it ripples through a community. Um, this is the first organized group presentation that we have made. And uh, thanks to uh, Maureen Mooney uh, and thanking all of you. We know what a powerhouse the Rotary has been in Merrimack, and in fact, any community uh, that it exists in. Uh, you are the people who are the movers and shakers in a community, who manage to get things done. You're the busy people that take on one more thing because it's important that somebody do it. And we hope to continue presentations to any number of businesses, individuals, I stand ready to present to anyone who may be interested in hearing this proposal and understanding it better because this is about our town, where we live, how we live, and the value of the way we live. Thank you.